Hi everybody, uh, I'm Ferruccio, uh, the CEO of Usan, and I sit here with Valeria, our head of product manager. Hi everyone. So we will uh, talk about uh, uh, Memsco speaker, uh, the technology that uh, we have developed at Usan. We have divided this presentation in four parts. Um, first of all, we will introduce the technology behind the men's speaker and we will explain why we think this technology will be as disrupted as the LED technology. Then uh, we will show how men's speaker can be used in audio model for uh, AR, VR glasses. Then we will produce Fauna, uh, our first B2C product that uses our men's speaker. And last but not least, we will uh, show how we have developed a bunch of applications that can be used for the maker community. First of all, um, what are the advantages of a MEMS loudspeaker compared to traditional electronic loudspeaker? First of all, it's much thinner, uh, so it uh, can be used in a very thin application. It's much lighter, and so it will save a lot of weight. Uh, in terms of acoustic, uh, the MEMS loudspeaker has a very wide bandwidth uh, that can cover IRS applications. So Kilohertz, but uh, they can be driven even at higher frequency, uh, even at up to 80 kilohertz, and, and still uh, covering the audio portion, so starting from 20 hertz up to 80 kilohertz. Uh, and most probably the biggest advantage for an uh, audio industry that is uh, really looking for uh, high degree automatization is the fact that uh, so, um, our last speaker can be sold very close. So we can deliver in tray or temporary, and then you can place the loudspeaker on a PCB and then solder it for uh, them as a standard electronic or, uh, component. Uh, let's have a quick uh, overview of the uh, MEMS technology and how MEMS loudspeaker is used. Uh, we start with the eight inch wafer where we have our MEMS actuator. Then the MEMS actuator is being pick and place uh, and flip chip on a two layer um, PCB. And then we place the cover uh, in an acoustic membrane, and then we have the loudspeaker. The main advantage in thermal manufacturing is that it's full automatization. Um, we have 100% traceability, forward and backward traceability at component level. Every loudspeaker is 100% tested at electrical and acoustic uh, level. We have already uh, discussed the fact that MEMS loudspeakers are very thin. Um, but right now, we have a component of MEMS loudspeakers that have 1.6 millimeter thickness. Uh, in future, we will um, even have a thinner loudspeaker at one millimeter, or even below one millimeter thickness. And the other advantage is the fact that we are not using a permanent magnet and uh, we are not using voice cords. So basically, the actuation is done uh, using piezo MEMS. And the piezo MEMS has a small SMD capacitor, so we have very low energy dissipation. There is no uh, temperature increase. Um, it's driven, uh, the MEMS actuator is driven by voltage, not by current. It has a very low weight, uh, and every very low weight means uh, there, is, uh, there are also very low vibration. Here, once again, the full stack. Uh, so we have a PCB, uh, the standard two-layer uh, FR4 PCB. We flip chip the MEMS uh, on the PCB. On the top, we have a, a server assembly that includes an acoustic membrane, a plate that adds stiffness to the system, and a cover to protect uh, the loudspeaker from external shock. Let's continue with the advantage of the main speaker. So um, this chart shows the very good linearity that we have uh, over full bandwidth uh, and in terms of SPL. So we have on uh, Y axis is uh, some pressure level SPL, on the X axis, uh, the voltage, and I said, main um, speaker not even full current, but voltage. And um, the higher the voltage, the higher the uh, sound pressure. And you can see here that it's there is almost a perfect linearity. Uh, at different, we have measured this at different frequency. It doesn't matter which frequency we are uh, using. Um, the linearity is always pretty good. And we have measured the linearity not just on a single component, but on uh, several parts. And this uh, slide shows that the part-to-part -part variation when it comes to linearity, voltage versus SPL, uh, is consistent on several parts and even between several patches. 
Now, uh, let's continue our uh, presentation uh, talking about um, the difference uh, or the advantage of the mental suite compared to balance sum and analytical dynamic loss. Let's start first in the comparison between MEMS and versus balance sum. And here you can see on this slide uh, our MEMS loudspeaker, uh, especially you can see the uh, green and the red curve that are the, our two uh, component compared to our balance sum. And you can see the bandwidth of the MEMS loudspeaker is much wider compared to all uh, parts that we have benchmarked. So we can really cover, and this measurement worth to be noticed is done with a so-called 7-Eleven coupler. Uh, so it's an occluded PR application. And as you can see from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz, we, uh, MEMS or speaker can cover full bandwidth uh, with almost constant SPM. This is not the case for balance armor. In this slide, we are talking about so-called so um, SPL flatness or uh, SPL uh, response flatness. And again, we have defined and normalized at 100 hertz and one kilohertz of SPL, uh, and then define uh, boundary at plus minus 6 dB. Uh, and as you can see here, again, the MEMS loudspeaker in and, and red curve um, stay perfectly in between the, the defined limit of plus minus 6 dB around the normalized SPL from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. And this is not the case for balance armature. And here we have summarized um, the bandwidth, and you can see with the so called upper plus minus 6 dB point or um, the upper um, 10 dB points uh, that the bandwidth uh, of MEMS um, is it's definitely superior to balance armature. It doesn't matter if it's a dual uh, um, driver balance armature or a single balance armature. These tables summarize. A comparison of uh, MEMS loudspeaker versus uh, balance armature loudspeaker. And as you can see, the comparison has been done uh, against the single driver, dual driver, and two-way system balance armature. Uh, overall, the MEMS loudspeaker perform uh, well and over exceed the performance or outperforms the balance armature driver um, in terms of SPL, in terms of uh, uh, SPL flatness, in terms of bandwidth uh, with plus minus 60 B limits. Uh, then in terms of IRS audio, um, the performance meant a loudspeaker is much better than balance armature. Uh, and also a THD, it's at the same level or better than balance armature. We are moving now uh, our comparison in comparing MEMS loudspeaker versus electrodynamic loudspeaker. Um, this chart to show the behavior uh, of a sound pressure level over frequency. Again, we have our two uh, MEMS loudspeaker, in this case, the curve of the uh, red one and the blue one. Uh, all our curves are uh, electrodynamic loudspeaker that we have used for this benchmark study. As you can see, the flatness of the sound pressure level of the MEMS loudspeaker is superior to electrodynamic loudspeaker from. And again, um, this is our, uh, again measured in a 7-Eleven coupler, so it's been occluded here application. And from uh, uh, 10 up to 20 kilohertz, um, you can see MEMS loudspeaker very flat. Okay, um, this table uh, show the comparison between uh, MEMS uh, loudspeaker versus uh, electrodynamic loudspeaker in terms of SPL flatness. And uh, as you can see, uh, the SPL has been normalized at uh, 94 dB SPL at one kilohertz. Um, and then uh, measurement we've done setting um, limit at uh, plus minus 6 dB. And the MEMS loudspeaker remains flat within the boundary from 10 kilohertz up to 20 kilohertz. Um, meanwhile, electrodynamic loudspeaker uh, are exceeding the boundaries. This slide um, show um, a comparison, uh, acoustic comparison in terms of bandwidth of the MEMS loudspeaker versus electrodynamic loudspeaker. And uh, again, uh, the um, upper lower limit uh, fix uh, as 6 dB point um, compared to the SPL normalized at 1 kilohertz. And, and then with this normalization, uh, the bandwidth was measured. And as you can see, uh, the mensal speaker had a bandwidth of 12 kilohertz, but uh, it's exceeding by far the bandwidth of any electrodynamic uh, loudspeaker that was measured uh, in comparison with our MEMS loudspeaker. 
And in terms of acoustic overview, we can see in terms of SPL, flatness, bandwidth, um, IRS, uh, and THD um, meant low speaker outperform. Now I will leave uh, the words to Valeria that uh, will um, drive you through our product and application. Thank you. Welcome again. And here is the short overview of the products which are possible to build with MM speakers. And one can see that it goes from a tiny in-ear headphones up to hi-fi loudspeakers. Um, before in this presentation, we were talking about the MEM speakers characteristics for occluded application. Um, but the MEM speakers could be used also in the free field applications like wearables or smart glasses. The next slide shows a typical SPL curve, um, and one could see the MEM speakers demonstrate a superior SPL behavior at the high frequency range, which makes this a great candidate for two-way systems. And now talking about the two-way systems, um, I would like to present our Danube audio module. Uh, it provides the great audio performance and has optimal mechanical dimensions. One can see we are reaching eight millimeters width and it's a very nice dimension to be implemented in the, in the audio glasses. We use MEMS tweeters and the electrodynamical woofer to reach the full bandwidth performance. And for driving these uh, audio modules, we use an external electronics, we call it Helica development board uh, and it provides a great eyewear development platform, which we will cover a little bit later in this presentation. Now I would like to welcome our Fauna audio glasses. This is the first MEMS speaker space audio glasses on the market. The idea behind was to develop an eyewear which looks like an eyewear and has no evidence of the technology, but still having the audio inside the temple. So we have four different models in two solutions with the blue light filter lenses and the sun lenses to be used outside or inside. We choose a high quality acetate for the frames. And this allowed us also to exchange the lenses to the prescription lenses. On this slide, there is a specification overview of our audio glasses. The bandwidth is uh, 250 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. The typical SPL at one kilohertz is 80 dB. The glasses could be used for phone call or play music. Um, also, a voice assistant could be activated through the glasses. We use two microphones with a beamforming algorithm. And for the glasses control, there is a touch sensor in both temples. The glasses have a waterproof factor AP52, and typical play time is up to four hours. For the charging of the glasses, we use the charging case. One important feature to be mentioned is audio privacy. Uh, Temple is designed based on the Danube audio module chip, which has a special dipole configuration. So the sound is traveling towards the ear canal and the leakage to outside is a minimal. This slide presents an overview of the reactivity measurements done by USound. We have compared uh, Bose, Huawei, and Fauna glasses. The Huawei data and the chart in the middle shows omnidirectional performance, meaning there is no beamforming for optimized privacy performance. Fauna and Bose glasses do exhibit a beamforming behavior, as one can see some irregularity on the shapes. And if one compare the Fauna and the Bose charts, one could recognize the Fauna has a much better performance, which demonstrates more sound cancellation in the horizontal plane. Coming to the end of our presentation, I would like to talk about Helica, our development board for assessing multiple new sound products for rapid prototyping. Helica contains um, a set of amplifiers to drive uh, two MEM speakers and the two electrodynamical speakers. It has also DSP for audio filter settings. And we see uh, Helike as a great development platform for makers who could combine it with a bendable audio stripe, for example, like Dion Maxi, for making own speakers or our Danube audio model to build own MEM speaker based audio glasses or to build own in ear MEMS based headphones. All demos and all reference designs are available at the DigiQ. So we have now uh, at the end of our presentation, 
and uh, thanks to Valeria for explaining all our application. We, all, we were able to convey the message that our MEMSAL speaker can really disrupt the audio industry uh, and can be deployed in all audio applications from portables, wearables, but also for Wi-Fi and macro audio applications. If you have any questions, you can contact us. Public information available on our website. And I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.